So these are the things that I've pulled from my stash. These are the things I hope to complete in today's video. I have a couple of really awesome trays here that I got for very little. Have a plan for those. Never seen these before, but I keep coming across these state, Alabama state baskets and in different thrift stores, different times. And then I also accidentally picked up a Mississippi one. So I have a fun plan for those. I've got two amazing uh, bookend sets here. These elephants and these I got an estate sale in with a whole lot of things. I think I paid less than a dollar for these. I did pay $2.99 each for these, but they're elephants, you know, roll tide. So I had to pick those up. And then I have a random assortment of candlesticks. Um, these three here are matching. Someone already attempted to paint this. I got them all at different thrift stores, um, different times. $2 for that one. I don't know how much those were. And then these, I got these together, $2.99 each. They have these cool, um, I don't know what you call this, cherubs and angels on them. And then these two are just um, random candlesticks, tall candlesticks. And I'm going to give all these a paint job. So that's what we're going to work on in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. So a lot of times during thrift flip videos, we don't show the behind the scenes stuff. Part, the biggest part of getting ready to do any thrift flip is the cleanup, the repair, the removing all the tags. So normally I would just do an item at a time and work on it, but since I'm gonna be doing attempting to do this whole table i'm going to go ahead and clean everything up to begin with and just go ahead and get my items prepped and clean and ready to flip <music> this large metal tray. I'm going to paint it um, cotton Dixie Belle chalk paint. I'm going to do two coats on it and I'm only going to do the front and I'm going to leave the handles in the metal. And I got this gorgeous decoupage paper. It's Roy Cycle decoupage paper. I ordered mine from Sonnet, from Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I am just going to use my fingernail and go around where I want to cut the paper to fit in the tray exactly. And then I'm just going to cut the paper out. Now, I am not good at decoupaging, but I have been watching Sonnet a pretty good bit and I'm going to attempt it one more time using her method of just doing a small area at a time. I'm using some cling wrap to rub all the bubbles out. That's usually where I go wrong. I think I rub too hard with my fingers and I always end up putting a hole in the paper. Um, but so hopefully I'm not going to do that today. I'm putting an even coat of Mod Podge just a little bit at a time and then rubbing it down and then putting another layer of Mod Podge over the top. And I think I finally got it and I am obsessed with this tray. So then once the Mod Podge has completely dried, I'm going to come back with a sanding block and just distress the edges of the tray to bring out some of that metal underneath. And then I'm going to give it a good seal with some polycrylic. And like I said, obsessed with this tray. I love how it turned out. I know someone's going to buy it, but secretly I'm hoping they don't so that I can keep it for myself. Now 
Moving on to the state baskets, I'm going to use the same Dixie Belle cotton paint, and I'm just going to paint the bottom of each of the states in two coats of this white paint. Once my paint is dried, I'm going to go through all my letter stamps and decide which ones I want to use. For the smaller states, the two Alabama ones, I'm going to use the letterpress stamps. They are just the smaller fonts. There's three small fonts. And I am going to put the word Sweet Home on one of them for Sweet Home Alabama. And I'm going to use the red tomato ink. And if you're in Alabama, you'll know why I picked red. I felt like it needed a little something more. So I found this like corner embellishment. I believe this was in the Queen Bee stamp set. I'm going to use the black ink and just put a little floral embellishment in the bottom and for the second alabama one i just put the word home so if they bought both of them they could put them next to each, each other and it you could say home sweet home with two of them for the mississippi one the typesetting capital letter stamps fit perfectly on there just doing the word home so i'm going to do it in black ink and to embellish it, I'm going to use some of the ferns, just because I love ferns. I don't know if Mississippi has lots of ferns or not, but I wanted some color and I wanted some pop, so I'm using these. These are from um, maybe the Franz stamp set. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. There's a transfer pack and a stamp set, and I can't remember the name of this one, but I know that I love it. I've used these ferns a lot. I gave the ink a few minutes to dry, and then I'm going to put a polycrylic coat on top to seal them all in. And also, I put a sawtooth hanger on the back so these could hang on the wall. And I think these are just precious, and I know somebody is going to snatch them up. Now we're gonna move on to a set of the candlesticks. I had just a little bit of apothecary paint left, so I added some water and I got it a little bit too thin. So I got the idea to mix in some of this mint julep with it. They are similar colors, so I figured they would work pretty well and I just stirred them up really well and it made the paint thick enough for me to paint with. I'm going to go over the three matching candlesticks with two coats of this Apothecary Mint Julep mix. And then I am going to come back with some white wax and, and just bring out all the detail. If you've never used white wax before, it is super easy. And anytime I use white wax over Apothecary, the item will sell every single time. So you just rub on the white wax and then rub it back with a paper towel and the wax stays in all those crevices and all those details and really makes them pop. And I love the way it 
changes the color. It's, this is one of my favorite things to do. I love these elephant bookends. I really kind of liked them as they are, but I wanted to give them a little bit of an update. So I'm just giving them, really it only took one coat and then touching up um, with the Waverly ink colored chalk paint. And they looked great, just black, but I wanted to bring out the details and just, you know, make them stand out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do next is just very dry brush on some gravel road, which is like a deep gray um, onto the elephants and just kind of, you know, just really dry brush it on, bringing out the details and see the difference in just the black. And with the dry brush, it's subtle. It's not a lot, but it's just enough. And then all I have to do is seal them in with some clear wax. And once the wax had dried, now I really, really love these elephant bookends. They are very elegant and very cool looking. For the second metal tray, we're going to use the Village Market Mold. I wanted to use a couple of animals that were facing each other, so I'm going to just dust the cow and the pig with a little bit of cornstarch and use some air dry clay to push down in the mold. And this air dry clay is so easy to use in these IOD molds. You just use the micro rim, flatten it out, clean up the edges, and it comes out really easy. I will say with these village market molds, you have to be kind of careful with their tail. And then once you have it turned out, you can kind of pick it up and manipulate it if you have any stragglers or anything that needs to be pressed down. So I did the cow and the pig and I went ahead and did some of the flowers and the wheat. Just did one of everything or actually I did four of the flowers and once the molds have set up just a little bit, I am going to glue them on. Actually, I let the molds sit overnight because I ran out of time this night. Um, but I'm going to glue them on using some Gorilla Glue. And I'm also going to use a dab of hot glue just for an instant hold so I don't have to wait as long to paint it. So I'm going to put all the flowers on the edges. Just get everything glued on. And I'm going to use the same paint mixture the apothecary and mint julep that we used on the candlesticks and i'm just going to paint this entire tray and i did not wait long enough to let that tail dry so i had to glue it back on and then i gave it a little bit of extra time before painting it so it took two coats and just some little touch up to get the tray painted i did paint the back of this tray and i am going to come back you guessed it with the white wax um, I started using the DIY white wax and then I realized it was really just going to take way too much. So I got my homemade white wax, which essentially is just clear wax with a little bit of white acrylic paint mixed in with it. It's just much more cost efficient than using the DIY wax. Although I will say that this is a much wetter wax. So if you're not careful, you will reactivate the paint and then you just kind of have a mess with that. Luckily, I did not reactivate the paint here, but I still feel like I wasn't able to rub enough of it off. So I'm not exactly crazy about how it turned out. I think it'll still sell, but it just quite didn't turn out like I had envisioned in my head, but it's still really cute. For 
the Magnolia bookends, I'm going to paint them this alabaster color chalk paint. Initially, I was just going to paint them all completely white and then distress back and bring back some of the gold. But once I got them painted white, I kind of had another thought and I'll show you guys in just a second after I get it finished painted. So this is actually a magnolia wreath that I had in my stash here in the basement. So I decided that I wanted to make these bookends look like actual magnolias. And there was lots of leaves, so I took some of this green. I believe this is Monet's Garden by DIY. It is one of my favorite greens. I don't know if the leaves look like magnolia leaves, but it's green and I love this green. So I went back and I painted all the leaves green and then I painted the center a brown color and the bottom brown. It took forever to do this and it was really hard to not get green where white should be or white on the green, but I eventually got them all like I wanted and I think they look so amazing and spring and beautiful and colorful can't wait to hear what you guys think about these still have to touch them up and seal them but I didn't have time to do that before this video had to be done but I still think that they look pretty good and I wanted to show you guys how they turned out I'm in love with these magnolia bookends For this larger candlestick, in my experience, anything that has this faux green rust patina, or maybe it's not even faux, it always bleeds through. So I thought that I would take a trick from the Ginger Chick Rehab book and paint a base coat of black and then seal it in and then paint white over the top. But y'all, once I got this painted black, I thought this is so beautiful. I just couldn't paint over it. So I'm going to use some Waverly antiquing wax to seal this in and make the details pop on this and really richen up the black color. So all I'm going to do is rub some of the wax on there and then rub it back and see it will stay in some of those details and look at this candlestick. How elegant is this? I love it. So I almost got everything on the table complete for this video. There was three candlesticks that I did not get finished, but I do hope that y'all have enjoyed this thrift makeover video. Please don't forget to like it if you enjoyed it and leave me a comment below, which was your favorite flip that I did in today's video. I appreciate you guys so much watching and I hope to see you back next week. Mm -hmm.